All right, okay. Thank you everybody for being patient. All right, well again, for those of you who have all joined us, we're all together. My name is Erica Herman, and I am an energy educator with Get Your Greenback Tompkins over at Cornell Cooperative Extension. So today we'll be chatting about the three ways to go solar. Uh, get your green back Tompkins. We're almost a teenager. We've been going strong for eight years. We're supported not only by the Park Foundation, but also NYSERDA, which is a New York State ent entity. And we'll be chatting more about them as we talk about solar. A nice egg helps support our energy navigator program. Again, my co-host is Lee, who is absolutely amazing, and she's gone through the training program. And then, of course, Cornell Cooperative Extension itself. So, have you ever gotten those flyers in the mail? Have you ever seen a solar farm being built? Um, there's a lot of construction going on and these big pieces of bluish materials, you know, sitting on a lawn somewhere. Have you ever heard solar is just really expensive and not available to everyone? Well, I'm going to share a little bit of a personal story of my journey with solar, and then we'll jump into various types to see what's a fit for you and your household. So my trip with community solar, um, one of the types we'll be chatting about, subscription community solar, started when I actually began this job. Back into summer 2018, I started going to a lot of outreach events to chat with people about our programs. And um, surprisingly enough, they kept pairing me next to this guy named Eric, who was promoting subscription community solar. I guess they thought we would work well together. Um, he came up to me and was like, hey, do you want to hear about this solar farm thing? And I said, well, I rent, so I can't do solar. And he said, well, actually, you can. Let me chat with you about this farm. So we chatted about it, and as with most of my decisions, I had to sit on it. I usually have a lot of questions, so I took all the paperwork, all the promos home, and I put in a nice, neat little pile on my desk. That got covered with more papers. That got covered with more papers. A um, Couple months later, I found the solar papers again. And I was like, yes, this is something I have to do. But then life got busy, more papers got piled on top of those papers again. So that was my solar journey so far, wasn't looking that great. A couple months later after that, I walked into a local grocery store and there was another subscription community solar farm who was promoting, um, if you sign up, the grocery store would get funding towards their new store, and I would get a $50 gift card for that grocery store that I liked if I signed up. So I hemmed and hawed, and I decided I probably should just go with it. So first I went back to look at Eric's solar farm, but they were all full. This farm was open now. So I took the plunge, I went online, I signed up, and within a couple days I got a call from a solar representative named Kat, and she answered all my questions, um, and she ended up helping me sign up for my payment options. Anytime I would call her, she would call me back within 24 hours. So within two to three billing cycles, when I actually started seeing these solar credits, I was just so excited. I highlighted everything, I did comparisons, and it was just really exciting to know that even as a renter, I could make a difference, be green, and also save a couple dollars. So, what is the solar energy and how does, it, how does it give me power as an individual in my community? Well, did you know that solar power is actually can be utilized in various parts of your house? That not only includes your lighting, it also in, can include um, powering your refrigerator, your cook stove, renewable forms of heating such as heat pumps, which are a really cheap and inexpensive alternative to fossil fuel <laughs> heating systems like oil, kerosene, propane, and for the future as more and more of us get to drive down the road in fuel efficient electric vehicles, we can power those with solar as well. So what is this power to the people that I mentioned earlier? Well, you actually have the power to pick where your energy comes from. Currently, your utility company picks where it comes from, and only about one-fifth of that energy comes from renewable resources. So that's kind of like saying, do you want $1 or do you want $5? And I would say, I want the $5 option, please. 
So um, we're going to break things up with fun facts. So feel free to exercise, move around a little bit, get into it. Um, so for this first fun fact, did you know that for every one mile driving, it equals about one pound of carbon dioxide for an average car that's about 20 miles per gallon. That's equal to about one bag of dried beans. So now that we're warmed up, second fun fact, did you know that solar energy that comes from the sun will actually last us another roughly five billion years? This solar energy we're getting comes right from the sunshine. The solar panels take in the sun and can give us this really clean renewable energy. So again, like I said, power to the people. You have the option of where your energy comes from. Do you want it to be fossil fuel based or do you want it to be renewable and also get it for a lesser price getting that renewable energy? So now that we've touched just on the very bare bones of where solar comes from and how it can impact us, let's jump into the three types right now. And the great thing with these three types, there ends up being a fit for everyone and everyone actually does get to save money, in fact. We're gonna start by chatting about on-site solar. So whether you're interested in on-site solar or not, a lot of the basics about on-site solar are relevant to the various types of solar we're gonna be chatting about today. So again, the energy gets soaked up by the panels and the cells end up converting that energy into units that we can then use in our home. So let's take a look to get a bit of an image on that. But wait, brief interruption for a fun fact. The first rooftop solar was actually done back in 1883. That's way over 100 years ago. And it was actually done in New York State. I was really surprised to find that out, but I guess it means we're progressing in the right direction. So again, let's look at this visual. We have the sun. Um, coming in to the panels, those cells are eating it up, and it's getting converted through the mechanism attached to the home to convert it into units we can use within our home. So think about your body and eating an apple. Ooh, that was really good. <laughs> you eat an apple, and the nutrients get dispersed to various parts of your body. They travel around, and they get dispersed. Whatever nutrients you don't use, your body ends up storing to be used later. It's the same idea with solar energy of all the types we're going to be talking about. Whatever you are not using, so in this case the home, it gets fed back into the grid in a form of credits you can use later. These credits can come in handy, especially into wintertime, when your solar panels are creating less energy because of the lack of sunshine. So the reason I'm mentioning the grid, the grid means that you're still connected to your utility company. So for the sake of conversation, make it easier, I'm going to keep referring to NYSEG, but that doesn't strictly mean NYSEG. It could be any major utility company such as National Grid, um, Con Edison, or other companies like that. So how, what, well, I want a little more details on on-site solar, and I I want to know how this is affordable because right now it still seems pretty expensive. Let's jump into that. So again, when you own the panels, they're either on site or they're on your roof. Um, you can actually claim um, New York State taxes, which are or tax credit of 25% up to $5,000, or there's a federal tax credit that's 26% off the costs. And also available to everyone, and we're going to jump into it in an example, is the NYSERDA New York State incentive that's open to everybody. So let's see how this kind of expensive pricing might actually be affordable. In this scenario, we're actually looking at a typical solar system that's called a 5KW. If you're looking for really technical terms, please feel free to join my coworker Guillermo Metz in another part of our solar series, and he'll talk about that more in a deep dive. But right now we're gonna focus on the costs. So again, this typical system costs us about $15,000. Ah, that's like a down payment for a house. That's a lot of money. Well, let's, let's break it down. Each watt costs a little under $3 right now. So what does that mean? Um, well, a watt is a unit of measurement used when sizing a solar panel system. So if we take the $3 per watt, anyone can take advantage of the New York State NYSERDA incentive of 35 cents off per watt. If you're income eligible, that doubles 
and you get 70 cents off per lot. So that starts to already bring the price down at either about $2,000 or $3,500, depending if you're the 35 cents off or the 70 cents off. If you have enough what is called tax liability, that means that you, owe, you make more money and you owe enough in taxes, there's a likelihood you can take advantage of the federal tax credit. Again, that's the 26% or the New York State one or and or, usually both, um, which is a 25%, again, up to $5,000. So if you can take advantage of not only the NYSERDA energy incentive plus the tax credits, that more than halves the cost. So we go from $15,000 to about $6,400. That's amazing. And actually, it would end up being a bit less because um, right now we're looking at 11 year payback. And the reason I'm saying less is as of June 1st of this year, NYSERDA who offers that watt incentive is also offering a 0% financing options for anything from a five to 15 year loan. And that's because of um, COVID period. So um, people can apply within the next 12 months or until the funding runs out. And that will mean no interest building. So that might be a great fit to even make it more affordable. But what if I'm a renter? Or what if it's just too shady on my property where I live? Or I just, I just don't want on-site solar. It's just not something I'm interested in. Well, community subscription solar, which is the one I have that since I rent, might be an awesome fit. Again, it's great for renters and pretty much anyone else. So in this case, you don't own the panels, you end up subscribing to them. So they don't live on your property. Actually, nothing is installed on your property. And the great thing is it works with budget billing, if that's a current thing you're taking advantage of with your utility company. And not many people know this, but there's actually no fees to sign up, and there is actually no additional cost at all by signing up for community subscription, so you will only be saving which is great. There's actually no tricks to that. So we'll come back to that. But first, for our fun fact, what is the ideal direction for solar panels to face? So we're thinking of either is it north, is it south, is it east, is it west? Feel free to put, I'll give it a little bit, feel free to put your answers in the chat box. Or if you're on Facebook Live, feel free to chat with some guesses. Um, I didn't load my Jeopardy music, so we'll kind of think about that in our head. So the answer is south facing, southeast, southwest, that all works really well. So let's jump back in and finish up with community subscription solar. How do I pay for this? How, how does this work? Well, generally, when you sign up, any solar energy you are getting from the panels you're subscribing to, you would pay at a five to 10% discount to NYSEG's current rate. NYSEG's current rate right now is about 10, 11 cents. So if you're getting a solar farm that's a 10% discount, you're only paying about nine cents per kilowatt hour. What's a kilowatt hour? A KWH. Well, a kilowatt hour is a unit of measurement that's used to measure our energy consumption. So let's see what that kind of looks like in a sample. So this is an example of a typical NYSEG bill that shows subscription community solar. We're seeing that the main thing we're looking for, we wanna find that little light bulb image on our bill. And then under our delivery and supply charges, I have it circled in purple, we're looking for something called C, D, G. And it'll either be followed by generation or value stack credit. So basically this is saying, I get my nice egg bill the same time as usual. I pay my connection to the grid, my utility company, which depending where you are might be like 15 or $17, unless you're in New York City, it might be a bit more. I pay my taxes, I pay my surcharges, and I pay my delivery fees. What I don't pay to nice egg most of the time is my actual delivery and supply cost because I'm getting that from my solar farm and paying them for that. So a couple weeks later, after I get my NYSEG bill, I get my solar bill. Now, in this example, this solar bill and company is offering a 10% discount. I would have paid NYSEG 
a little over about $17.60. But because of my discount, I'm actually paying a little over $15. Now you can tell from this bill, the person's definitely not heating with electric, um, or you would see that the kilowatt hours used is a lot more than 189. Um, and you would see more savings because you'd be using more electricity in that sense. Hmm. I've heard of something called an energy supply company. Is that the same as subscription community solar? That's actually a great question. So subscription community solar is not an energy supply company, also known as an ESCO, but you do get your supply and delivery from the solar farm. An energy supply company is something different. We're just your um, energy supply would be coming from this third party source. Some are fossil fuel based, some are renewable based. The reason I'm bringing this up is some people during the winter, um, even, you know, say their panels don't drain enough electricity to cover their needs, um, or their rollover credits, because you do get rollover credits for credits your panels create that you don't use from month to month. Say none of that solar energy or credits is enough during a certain time in the winter. I've just eaten through all of them. The energy supply company, if you use a green one, would then still provide you with renewable energy. Um, the main thing you'd wanna do is you wanna make sure that you do what's called consolidating your bill. Consolidating your bill means that you make it so that your energy supply company also shows up on your main NYSEG bill. And then the subscription community seller can also discount those costs as well. So feel free if you have more questions on that, I'm happy to touch base on that more at the end of the program. But wait, let's get back to just solar. How do I even pick a farm? Is there a right, is there a wrong answer? There's not. Um, you might pick a farm because you want the highest percent discount. You might pick a farm that has a great billing option that fits your lifestyle. Or maybe you just wanna sign up for a farm that's open right now so you don't have to wait months for many months until it's opened. You want a farm that's what's called um, connected to the grid. It's ready to go. It's not in the building stages. It's not waiting for NYSEG to connect them for people to take advantage of the solar energy. So really you can't go wrong with any of the options you end up picking. So there's actually, I don't know if you knew about it, there's a special version of subscription community solar and the program is called Solar for All. So this is a free New York State program for any household that would be HEAP or SNAP income eligible. You just have to be paying your own electric bill. On average, it takes $10 off your bill, just like HEAP, right off your bill. And that energy of that $10 worth of energy comes from a local subscription community solar farm in another part of the state. Nice thing is you only get one bill. You're still connected to NYSEG, but you still just get one bill, not two. And the program lasts for 10 years. It started in 2018 and should be going strong till 2028. If you have budget billing, that works just fine as well. Um, if you're on budget billing, the credits will build up to the end of your calendar year and it will get dispersed over the course of your next year. Or you can contact NYSEG and have them disperse it in a different form. The reason I'm saying $10 on average a month is it does depend on how much, so I'm looking out the window to see how much sun there is right now. So feel free to take a look, see if it's raining or, or sunny outside where you are. Um, the more sun there is, so in the summer, there would be a higher amount of, of credits just because it's sunnier out. So it would be probably less than $10 in the heavy winter months, just when the panels aren't creating as much energy. So again, about $10 on average a month would come off the bill. Totally free program. Um, there's no fees or anything like that if you decide that it's not a fit for you anymore. Ah, but what if I'm in between? What if I want on site solar, but again, shady area or there's something else going on? Maybe I live in a historic district. There's something going on where I just can't do on site solar. Well, this option. Um, community solar purchase is similar to subscription solar, except that you own the panels. Um, you're kind of glued to them in a sense because you do own them, but nothing's installed on your property. So again, it's a great uh, option for homeowners or if you're a very long-term renter for the foreseeable future, it could be a great fit. Again, it's perfect siding in what direction? South. So the farm will be situated in a nice southern facing area. 
how do I pay for it? You can take advantage of the NYSERDA state energy incentive. And that again, as a reminder, was 35 cents for anyone. Or if you're income eligible, the 70, the 70 cents per watt off. If you have that tax liability we chatted about earlier, you can also take advantage of the federal state or the federal tax credit, sorry, which is 26%. And anyone can do the NYSERDA's new as of June 1st, 0% financing that will be going on for the next few months. So it can be a great option. Um, that cost per watt, again, watt being how they size the solar system, um, or in this, this um, meaning with subscription solar purchase, how many they allot you panel-wise on the farm. Um, each watt actually costs less than it would for on-site solar because of what's called economy of scale. Um, the way I think about it right now is toilet paper. Say a bunch of us are interested in doing com community solar purchase. So we'll turn the solar panels into toilet paper rolls. So each of us decide, I would like a piece of solar from that farm. So we each buy an individual toilet paper roll. That's pretty expensive. If we all went in on a bulk purchase and then split up the cost, that would be a lot cheaper. So it's the same idea with community solar purchase. It ends up being cheaper with economy of scale because a bunch of other people are buying into that solar system as well. All right, I think it's the last one. <laughs> Fun fact. Some community solar farms actually do what's called dual land use areas. So that means it's not only houses solar, but also has sheep grazing. Or some farms do solar and beekeeping and pollination. So it can be a dual land use option. But how does this benefit me, my community, the environment, the next generations coming up? Well, it makes us self-sufficient and we get to save money. We get to have the choice where our energy comes from. And instead of having the expense of fossil fuels, as we've heard from rate hikes and such with the prices all going up, we can choose renewable solar energy that will actually always be saving us money. Thinking about the next generations, our children, our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews, the neighbor children playing down the street, you know, calling with chalk, you know, outside right now on the sunny day. You know, shouldn't we be the ones protecting the air they breathe, protecting their snowball fights, and protecting the steady rains to nurture and care for the gardens that they're growing? Um, all this we can help by doing cutting back on fossil fuels um, because things are heating up and affecting those things we love. So again, whether you believe in climate change or not, things are heating up. Um, by using solar, we're reducing greenhouse gases again, having that clean air to breathe, and we have the power and the choice. So by learning and understanding these options, you have the power to take control not only of where your energy comes from, where your money goes, but also helping out people in our community to release their energy burden for yourself and your family. And this makes solar a truly inclusive choice for everybody. So we're kind of at a crossroads right now. Um, there's all these solar options, you know, what do I pick, what do I do? Well, hopefully you're excited, you're jazzed, you have a lot of questions. So there's two things you can do. You can either reach out to one of our energy navigators, such as Lee who introduced herself earlier. Again, energy navigators are trained community volunteers. They go through a free training program to learn a little bit about everything about energy, including solar, and they're peer-to-peer -peer educators to support residents, family, friends within our community. So if you're interested, um, signups are at any point, and we'll be starting training again next spring. Also, feel free to reach out, and from all of us at Get Your Green Back, we hope to hear from you soon. So um, this is my contact information. I'll jump back to it, but I just want to give credit where credit is due to all the amazing um, resources and people who shared their knowledge with me, as well as some photo credits of where we got some images. Um, thank you, Stuart. I know we took an image from Eco Village, so thank you for being here to represent. And again, this is our contact information. So again, thank you all for coming. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Whether you're on Facebook Live or Zoom, uh, we're going to, connect to um, 
reconvene and answer any questions that came up. And also feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question or just put it in the chat, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing.